Okay, today we're going to look at what's called a sign analysis. Um, I'm using some examples that I used in a previous video. I'll put a link in the, this video to that one. So in the previous video, I showed you how to find the x-intercepts, the holes, the vertical asymptotes, the horizontal asymptote. Today, all we're going to be doing is making a sign analysis, and that sign analysis is going to help us to decide if the function is positive or negative in between these key points. And as we saw in the previous video, when the only way that it could change from positive to negative or negative to positive, the only way it could change signs is if it were to go through an x-intercept or a vertical asymptote. So we can assume if a function is positive, let's say, to the left of this x-intercept, it will continue to be positive forever as it goes off to negative infinity. Similarly, whatever happens to the right of this vertical asymptote. So we're going to write a sign analysis. On our sign analysis, we just start with basically what is our x-axis, and then we label the key points. So the only key points we need to worry about here are the x-intercept and the vertical asymptote. So this was our x-axis. Our horizontal asymptote would be parallel to our x-axis, so it's not going to show up on our sign analysis. I always start with 0. We have an x-intercept at negative 3, and a vertical asymptote when x is two. So those are our key points. Sometimes I just make a little little picture to myself to remember that this is an x-intercept and this is a vertical asymptote. Then what you do is we're going to pick a point that's to the left of negative three. It can be anything. Let's say it's negative five. If we had negative five plus three, the answer would be negative. And if we had negative five minus two, the answer would be negative. And we know that a negative divided by a negative is a positive. So we know that the function is positive when we're to the left of negative 3. Again, we only tested a point at negative 5, but we know that if it's positive here, there's no way it's going to switch signs going to the left since we know that there's no more x-intercepts or vertical asymptotes. Then we're going to check a point that's between negative 3 and 2. If 0 is possible to check, that's always a great one to do. If we were to plug in 0 for x, the numerator would be positive, the denominator would be negative, and overall the function would be negative, since a positive divided by a negative is negative. The last thing we do is pick a point to the right of 2. Again, any point to the right of 2. Let's pick 10. 10 plus 3 will be positive, 10 minus 2 will be positive, and a positive divided by a positive is positive. Tomorrow we'll learn how to put together all of these pieces so that we can actually create a graph.